There's been a, a separation of the, of the body and the person. And this is why activists argue biology has nothing to do with gender identity. And kindergartners are now being taught that their bodies tell them nothing about their authentic self and who they really are. You know, the naturalist believes our, our bodies are part of uh, nature. And, and since nature is the product of mindless, purposeless force, uh, just a force, the body's also a product of, of mindless, purposeless forces. You know, therefore, the body has no intrinsic uh, purpose and there's no obligation to respect it. <laughs> we can use the body for whatever we want. And, and since our biology has no ultimate meaning, we can make it whatever we want. Is this starting beginning to make sense? You know, we can uh, invent things and, and, and say gender is not binary, but on a um, on, on a continuum. We we hear things like you can be you can be cisgender, transgender, non-binary, intersex, uh, gender queer, gender fluid, gender non-conforming, agender, gender void, and and then more. You know, feminist Camille Paglia said that that fate, not God has given us this flesh. We have absolute claim to our bodies. This is what she says. We have absolute claim to our bodies and may do with them as, as we see fit, the masters of our own ships, so to speak. And, and, and this is the predominant view, it seems like. But instead of condemning our LGBTQ plus friends and neighbors to hell with, with clobber verses from scripture, we should follow Nancy Piercy's lead and, and ask them, why should I accept such an extreme devaluation of the human body? Why has it become acceptable for a person to mutilate his or her body or engage in extremely harmful sexual activities, but not conform his or her mind to something better? You know, it, it, it's the, the Christian who has the higher view of bodily worth, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works is what Paul says in Ephesians. You see, sex and, and gender are part of God's perfect creation and are intrinsically good. When you boil it down and, and contrary to the popular narrative, the LGBTQ plus movement, uh, what, the, what they're saying, especially as seen in the transgender discussion, it's driven by the idea that you ultimately have to hate your body. You're at war with it. Hmm. As we uh, present a better alternative, uh, I think that we see it's it's more than this. And hear me out, guys. Uh, males and females are the are the biological and physiological counterparts of one another. This is how we've been designed. The denying this is to contradict that design that that we see every single day in nature. I mean, I mean, eyes are are made for seeing, arms are are made for moving, feet are made for walking tongues for tasting and speaking and you get you get the picture you know but one trans activist that i've read recently in preparation for this short talk says this that we should why should my biological sex have any say in how i live my life morally now, this is a profoundly disrespectful way to view the body and and i'd argue it leads to self alienation as as the person gradually becomes more and more distant from the reality that their body is an integral part of who we are. And this is evidenced by the, the regret expressed by trans men and women who surgically alter themselves only to find that the, the problems that they were hoping the surgery would solve remain unsolved after the surgery. But instead of condemning people to hell and calling them sinners, there's a, there's a better way to communicate, I think. Our message should be, why do you accept such a demeaning view of your own body and biological identity? You know, the, the Christian ethic is a better ethic here. We should be uh, taking our, our moral cues in this area from our bodies. And, and when we do, we experience self-integration, not self-alienation. What I'm saying is that, that when we live in harmony with the, the purpose for which we've been made, we will be more fulfilled. And I, I know personally many people who would attest to this. Uh, uh, Beckett Cook, uh, Christopher Yuan, Rosaria Butterfield, just to name a few. You know, our call is to honor our bodies and, and live in accordance with the creator's design based on, on the high view of the dignity of the human body. Our message is that, that we'll always be more fulfilled when we live in line with, with who we really are according to the true story of reality. You know, our, our lives aren't about us alone. Camille Paglia is, she's dead wrong. I'm sorry, she's dead wrong. 
that when she said when she said that we have absolute claim to our bodies and and it may do with them as we see fit, she's wrong. Because we bear the image of God, and the and the ownership of that image belongs to God. Let's not buy into the to the rampant individualism permeating the culture right now. Remember, you are not your own. You've been bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in what? In your body. And since we bear the image of God, <laughs> we're not free to decide for ourselves what's best for ourselves. We should live consistently with the character of the one we portray. Unlike the ethics of, of naturalism ruled by individualism, scripture's commands regarding sex and gender are, are never arbitrary. They're endowed with, in, with incredible meaning and purpose. As a telos, our sexuality has a higher purpose than merely our own desires. Every part of us was created primarily to radiate and testify to the glory of God. 